A woman in a wheelchair at a gym with her two pound dumbbells because her legs don't work, but she went in there anyway, that inspired me far more. Yeah, my first time I talked, I literally went up and blanked out. Like I literally could not think, I could not see the card. How I fixed it speaking was over time. But I'll give you a couple of key things on speaking for everybody. One, I had to, I had to figure out, you know what someone said to me is, you love baseball. You don't stutter when you talk about baseball. You don't get insecure. I go, well, I love that and I believe in it. They're like, oh, you don't, you know, you talk about your kids, you're great. I thought, oh, there's a correlation here between me actually saying what I believe and what I'm passionate about and my ability to communicate it. And so that now my first layer is always, I must be passionate about it and I must believe it and I'm never doing an impression of another person. So I always come from a place of saying what I really believe because you can't transfer to somebody that which you don't experience yourself. I can give you passion, I can give you energy, I can give you my belief if I'm experiencing it. Big key as a speaker, I'll give everybody. Stop trying to convince everybody of what you're saying. That's not the threshold of being a good communicator. People do not need to believe what you're saying. They need to believe you believe what you're saying. And as long as they believe you believe what you're saying, you're an effective speaker. I stopped trying to get people to believe me. There's a neediness. There's a salesmanship to that. I stopped that. It's a subtle difference. I just want you to believe I believe it. That's influence. Influence is you believe I believe it. Yeah, same room, same people. That helped for me. Um, but I figured out I didn't uh, have any preparation. So my confidence when I speak now, just like this interview, the amount of preparation you've done for this is, it is more than anyone who's interviewed me, right? And so me, the separation is in the preparation. Like I have to be prepared. I have to know what I'm going to talk about. And so that second time, I, I knew every single thing I was going to say. I didn't do great, but I did what I said I was going to do. I got up and I did it. I got up and I delivered. And I'll just be candid with you. I liked the feeling, eventually, that I affected somebody. I liked the feeling that you know, maybe the first time I spoke, I, I didn't affect anybody. That second time, maybe there were 40 people and maybe one person I helped. And I had this very weird capacity now to focus on the ones I help. I, I actually focus, if I speak to 50,000 people, there's gotta be 3,000 people there who think I saw it. There has to be. There's at least 30, right? There's someone there, and if I obsessed over those 30 people, that's what made me nervous. I was obsessed with just basically reaching somebody. So the irony was, the beginning of my speaking career, it was my anxiety and fear of it that was what was inspiring about me. Not the words I said. Over time, I think the words became more inspiring, but I found what was inspiring about me. What put them in spirit. And it was overcoming my anxiety and fear of actually doing what they saw. I, I was at the gym yesterday and a woman drove by me in a wheelchair at the gym. I was working out pretty hard, and she wheeled by me, heavy set lady in a wheelchair. I'd be honest with you, I, I watched her wheel past me. She inspired me. You know what courage it takes to get in your wheelchair? It's like, I'm gonna go to the gym, right? I'm gonna go to the gym. She's heavy set, awkward. That inspired me far more than the jacked up dude doing 60 pound curls. I mean, that's inspiring, but you see that. A woman in a wheelchair at a gym with her two pound dumbbells because her legs don't work, but she went in there anyway. And you know how insecure she was about going in there. She's the only person in a wheelchair. She doesn't know what she's gonna see, how people are gonna react to her. She's not in shape. She doesn't have her full makeup on and her little you know, halter top like the other girls in there. And she's right in there. She was right in there working out right next to them, right? I couldn't take my eyes off her. I couldn't take my eyes off her. And I ended up telling her. She was leaving. I left what I was doing, I walked over and said, I just want you to know something. You're inspiring me. This is wonderful. Her face just lit up. Because you know how sad she how insecure she was about being in there. Most inspiring person is the one overcoming the fear of doing something, not the person who's excellent at.